This tutorial is a sample from Make Cell Shaded 2D Characters with Krita, a course that's available now, so I invite you to check it out. Link on the screen in the video description. Enjoy! In order to make cell shaded art, we have to understand how light and shadows work, at least in a basic way. We have to know where to place the seam, how we can stylize realistic shading, because that's what it is. That's why we have three spheres in here and three different light directions. These light directions represent sunlight, so that's kind of light that's even on the surface. It's not point light or a spotlight that just works inside of a cone. No, it's going to be uniform on the entire sphere. So here's the base shadows. It works in a very simple way. If the surface of the form is facing towards the light, it's going to be lit. And if it's facing away from the light, it's going to be in the shadow. The shadow is the absence of light. Now, the absence of light is black in general. You can't see a thing if there is absolutely no light. But we have something called the ambient light in the world. That's just a way to picture it, but that's the light that's being diffused around the space. In general, you have that with the atmosphere, it's just diffusing the light from the sun. That's why when you go outside, you don't have pure black shadows. Now, we have an even highlight color, but we also have a bit of a fade. Well, when we have a sphere, and that's the whole difficulty with light's basics, the surface does not all point in the same direction. That's not a plane. You have an area where the sphere is not facing exactly in front of the light, but it's not facing away from it either. So it still receives a bit of light. Because, you know, in every point of the surface, you have a normal direction, that is, where the surface is pointing, that uh, shifts slightly. Well, the amount of light it receives, thus its lightness will shift slightly, creating some kind of gradient. So we have the same effect with the light coming from the top. The top of the sphere is lit and the bottom of the sphere is in the shadows. Same thing with the light coming from the top right. The top right of the sphere is lit and the bottom right is in the shadows. Now, what if we not only have one, but two light sources? And on top of that, let's add a bit more complexity. What if those sources of light are colored? So we might have a blue LED light. We might have some orange or yellow tone coming from fire or whatever. And um, I've added a green alien light to the mix just to show you that the principle is always the same. So here's the result. The idea is the same. If the surface is pointing towards the light, it receives it. If it's not pointing towards it, it does not receive it. So with the blue light coming from the right, it's only the right side of the sphere that's being lit. With the fire light coming from the bottom right, it's only the bottom right that's being lit. And the alien light coming from the bottom only lights the bottom section of the sphere. The way I've painted them, they work a bit more like point lights, where the light fades away as the surface gets further from it. That's typically something that happens with a fire that's not that powerful, so it's not going to light the entire form evenly. That's why you get a bit of a rim light. For instance, around the edge of the sphere, you have a slightly more yellow and brighter tone. As you can also note, if the form has a matte gray material and the light is colored, well, the color of the light is going to bleed on it. So in the case of a gray sphere, it's very simple because you're just going to add blue to it, orange or green, it's not going to mix with the surface color as it's neutral. That's a bit more complex, obviously, in the real world, as you have more or less reflective materials, some materials that might absorb light a bit more, and colors that might mix together to give you different results. In reality, light works in a more complex way as it bounces around and different materials do not reflect it in the same proportions. 
but these simple light principles are all it takes to make cell shaded characters. And if you want to learn more about that, I invite you to check out the course. Click on the screen and thank you kindly for watching.